Are you ready to paint today? I'm excited. This one's really cool. And I know I say that on all my videos, but really, if I don't like it, I'm not going to paint it. But I really like this one. This is a cool design. I searched forever. I saw a bunch of different ones of these ideas on Instagram, and I'm kind of mixing a whole bunch of ideas together. And so I think it's going to really turn out and be super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix paint on my canvas. It's going to be awesome. And really, there is no wrong way to do this. You can put it on your palette and then your canvas, but for the sake of saving money and time and effort, I'm just going to go ahead and add it to my canvas. Um, now, as I go around my canvas, I want to make sure that I'm blending properly and then my edges are, like, covered. So that way it's, it's just, you know, all around good that I have, that I'm being consistent. So I always like to start with the lightest color first and then go to different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my, wipe my, my um, paint off. I'm going to go back into the red, do a little bit of red, try not to get into the yellow right away because I do want to have some areas where I do have the true red. Now red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors, so that's why I've chosen to have them as my background. You can put whatever colors you want. You can you can have them in ever however blotchiness you want your blotches to be. Go for it. Have fun. This is your painting, and I'm so sorry about that with the video. I just now realized what was going on with my video. I looked up at it and saw that it wasn't right. Okay, so here we go. So now I have the colors. They're all good. Um, wipe off some of that red. And then I'm going to go back into the yellow. Wipe off some of the yellow by just adding it to the, to the paint. Okay, so now I'm in the yellow a little bit. Sound a little bit. Going to have some orange happening, which is great. I want orange. Okay. That's looking good. Okay. Wipe off my brush. Now I'm going to go into the blue and try to just cover what I have with blue. Now you could cheat a little bit, which I think is what I'm going to do by just adding the orange and purple and all those different colors. Um, it is good to try to practice a little bit in blending. This is a very good blending practice. So if you want to be brave and really just go for it, go for it. It is good to just have some paintings where you just practice ideas. That's really good to have that. Okay. Ew! Yes! That's what I want. Yeah! Love it. Yuppers. Ooh, are we going to go into some green? Show me green. Woo, green. Yeah, love it. Love the green. Oops, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do my edges. Oh, no. When I was doing that purple, I didn't do edges. Greens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and since I went into a really dark color, I'm going to go and wash my brush really good. And then I'm going to dry it, make sure I get all of the water off. I'm working in acrylics and I'm working in paint that is not the cheapest paint out there. So it's, um, so it doesn't really require a lot of, um, it doesn't require a lot of of water, if it any, to be added. I mean, it does dry kind of quick, and I'm not liking that. I'm trying to see if I can get some of that purple. There we go. Getting the purple. I like purple. I think purple is a good color. When used sparingly, I think purple is a good color to be used as a highlight. Um, that's usually... Purple can be overdone, I think, sometimes. And too much of a good thing is bad. 
I'm gonna wash my brush again. Now let's see, let's flip the canvas and see if we can get some orange to happen. I might need to add a little bit more yellow to my canvas. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more yellow. Blending on the canvas can be really fun. It really can, because you kind of, in the end, like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to end up with. I can see that. I can totally, yeah. You have a gist and a basic idea of what you want, but yeah, sometimes just, you know, the magic just happens, and you want it to happen on the canvas. It's sad when the magic happens, and then it's just on the... Um, when the magic happens and it's just on the palette, that's kind of sad. Don't let that be you. That's coming. Okay, so that's not really working out. I got to get this before it dries. I wanted to blend out this edge a little bit, make it a little bit softer. There we go. I just want to soften out the edge. Alrighty then. So now let's go back into the red, which I think I'm going to add. Or no, I have a little bit left on the canvas. You can tell when there's still paint on your canvas because it's um, it's shiny. Yeah, but this is going to need a tiny bit, just a hint of paint. Don't need a whole lot there. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my palette because I don't want to add a whole bunch onto my canvas. Um, I recommend every single time that you do a painting to start with a fresh um, palette, fresh clean palette, whichever one you choose. Um, there's the whole deal that paper plates are wasteful, and yes they are, but here's the whole quandary. It takes energy to make clean water. So what's more harmful to the environment, throwing out the paper plate or spending 30 minutes with the water running so I can wash the palette? Get what I'm saying? So, yeah. Go ahead and add just a little bit onto there. So I prefer the paper plate method. Um, also, it can be harmful. Over time, paint can be harmful to your plumbing, especially when you're painting like I am. Um, I am now in my third painting that I've painted today. And, uh... I'm doing one painting, as you all know, I'm doing one painting a day, the 365 day challenge. You can see the uh, Facebook group on, on Facebook. It's called painting challenge. Um, I post the photos, everybody posts, like everybody that's painting with me, we all uh, post our photos and tips and tricks and ideas and, and just a lot of inspiration and stuff. So go check it out. This is what this video is made for. So if you're following along and painting with me, I am so glad you're here today. Let's have a good time. I'm having a good time. Orange isn't really happening. Oh, this orange. Tisk, 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 orange. Where are you at, orange? And have you, as you've been painting with me and doing this challenge, haven't you noticed that your paintings are getting a little bit better? Like you're just, your handwriting of painting is just exploding and getting better? Because mine is. I, I still come up with duds. I do. It happens. Like today I did some palm trees and I wasn't really feeling the, the coconuts. I, I did the coconuts, but I don't know. I think I could have done better on that one. But live and learn, right? That's the whole reason why we're doing this challenge is to live and learn and practice. And hopefully we can come up with some amazing masterpieces along the way. Yeah, this is working. This makes kind of orange. 
I just want to make sure it blends well. And I want to make sure I also get the sides too. I think I added too much yellow on my brush there. Yeah, I did too much yellow, too much yellow. There we go, orange, it's coming. Hi, orange. How are you doing? Okay, so I'm liking it. This is great, this is wonderful. Nice little color wheel we got going on. So you can see that what we did was we first used primary colors and the primary colors are red, blue, and green. So we did red, blue, and green, or excuse me, I'm so sorry, I'm tired. The primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And by put, we put them on the canvas, we mixed them together, and our secondary colors were purple, green, and orange. The orange didn't turn out great, but oh well, it works, I'm happy with it. Um, if you get little lines in your painting like this, this is awesome. Try to get little lines. I tried to make the idea that I kept rules for myself that it would go straight in and straight out. So I tried to make a starbursty effect. So I was with my paint. But as you can see, I have little lines. Little like where it's lighter and darker in some areas. You know, little imperfections. And I think that having those little imperfections makes this painting be a little bit more awesomer and cooler in its whole gist of being a painting. done that and it's all the way dry I do see there's a little shiny spot if you see shiny spots that mean, means your paint is still not completely dry I recommend drying it all the way completely as much as possible so now I'm gonna add some white onto my canvas I'm gonna make my letters okay so here goes I'm gonna use my little tiny liner brush. I love my liner brush. I recommend that you play and practice with liner brushes because I use them almost in every single one of my paintings. I am painting on an eight, uh, eight by 10 canvas, so it's is very small. And so of course I'm always gonna have small brushes, but it's just good practice. So I'm just gonna go and make the basic idea of where my letter is gonna be. I messed that one up. Totally messed it up. But, ah! Oop, too much. The paint wasn't fully dry underneath. Oh, my paint wasn't dry. That's what happens. My paint wasn't dry. If my paint was dry when I watered that, it would not have been pulled up from the canvas. That's okay. We can fix that. 
course, do we want to fix it? It's kind of cute. There we go. Make sure I don't get into the purple. Okay. This is a really good example of what not to do. And if you do it, this is how you fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and completely dry this, paint over it, and we'll start again. So I'm kind of glad that this happened so that way I can show you how to fix it. Oftentimes in my classes when I have students, I see that they get frustrated and they keep working on an area and they just keep working and keep working. Well, the problem is the paint that's wet has acetone in it and the acetone will pick up the other paint that is not fully dry and it'll lift it back off the canvas and that's what happened in this situation. The paint was lifted back off. I mean, I did add water, I wiped it, and I tried and I tried to paint it, but you could see it just, uh, mo it moved, it washed it away. So what I'm gonna do is I completely all the way dried it. It's all the way dry. So now I'm gonna go back in and repaint it and cover up my boo-boo. And if you see now, the color is really lasting. It's sticking and it's staying onto the canvas. Whereas before, had I have not done that, it really wouldn't have stayed in the canvas. So now I'm gonna go and do it again and thoroughly make sure it's all the way completely dry so I don't have another boo-boo. It's still a tiny bit shiny, um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my other letter first to give the, the L a little bit longer time to dry. I'm going to wash my little brush here. I'm going to use my tiny little skinny one. And I'm going to do the basic idea of the E. So the E is going to be meow. going to be meow, a little guy, and then another one, a little line going down, a little line going up, and a little bit going out, a little bit going out. So do you see how I have the gist of the idea of what I'm doing here? So now I can go and really focus and try to 
bring this E up a little bit, make him thicker. So where I put these lines, I felt like this E was a little low. So instead of making that line right in the middle, I'm going to the top here and making it go higher versus having these lines be exactly in the center of where I put them because they're just a basic idea and now I'm fixing it or I'm fluffing it up. That's good. Um, let's see the E. Let's move him up just a tiny bit. Not much though. So this little white line is almost in the center of where this is. So I'm going to make sure that these match. Yep. Wipe that down. If you hurry up and wipe it before it dries and get it off, then it's, um, it's easier to erase your painting. But once your paint dries, that's it. So you kind of have to work fast with it. Now I think it's good to give different depths for uh, different things, different thicknesses of lines. Just gives more, it's funner to look at. Okay, I'm going to let that be. I'm going to come back and touch it up. That's good for now. Sometimes it's good to revisit ideas. Shoot. Woo, we did it again. I'm going too far. That's what it is. I don't want too much. It's too far. There we go. Most likely I'm going to need to add some blue there later. We'll see how we're doing. Okay, we're going to go L. Oh, we're going to go up. There we go. So now I'm just going to fill in these two letters and make them happy and make them cool and square. Um, now white also sometimes takes a couple coats. I have a better quality paint. Um, ooh, it's picking up some of the blue. That means my blue wasn't thoroughly dry. So I'm going to go back and forth on these letters to allow the coats of white to dry. Now you don't need to be painting your paintings with hair dryers. I just find that in filming and for my patients, it's just a little bit better. I can get more stuff done and accomplished and you know, I don't have to sit there for an hour and wait. I can just hair dry it and yet be done with it. Especially painting like every day the way that I've been doing it. I like to have everything set up ready to go. I mean, I'm not seeing it as a chore Sometimes like today I've painted a couple extra So that way if I do want to take a break in my mind I still feel that I painted I gave myself leeway because oh, I painted three on Saturdays, so I don't, know, I don't have to paint on my day or Tuesday. Sometimes I do that um it makes me personally feel better with what I'm doing, especially because I'm trying to keep this alive and post once a day with a new video. So that's one way I'm getting around the fatigue. Um, this is taking like forever to dry and I really want to put a second coat. I can work on my other stuff, but I really want to focus on the letters right now before I start going elsewhere with this.
Okay, so now with our little tiny brush, we're gonna go back over and apply another layer. And while I do this, I'm gonna take special care that I really keep my lines straight and make these letters very square. Lots of pointy edges and straight lines. Now also, if it's not super perfect, that's all right. I also don't want it to be super perfect because this needs to be like something that you would be in like an arts teacher's classroom. You know, like something fun and and just, you know. This is a fun piece. It doesn't need to look like a photograph. If you get a little bit of bubbling in your paint because your paint's too thick, that's okay. It gives character. Eventually, though, unless you have, like, um, special kind of thickeners in your paint, then you really, they flatten out. Especially if you use, well, if you use high heat uh, really quick right after applying paint, they usually try to stay a little bit more bubblier. Uh, but you kind of need to have product in your paint, and that's really what makes it stand out. Um... Having bubbly paintings, I've noticed that when I do have, when they're raised a little bit, they tend to sell better. People are more interested. They're more visually stimulating um, to have the paint kind of sticking up a little bit. But really, that's just adding thickeners and buying good quality paint is all that is. It really isn't a mystery. Everybody thinks it is, but it's not. It's so simple, it's, e it's so hard, it's easy. Um, I typically don't do a lot of that because a lot of, I, I do boosts and stuff, so when you have raised paintings, you have to transport them and be very careful. And with me having like, um, going to craft fairs and stuff like that, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me when I move them around. Um, it's not as easy. Whew, I like this. This is a cutie. He's wonderful. If you need to, it's okay to turn your canvas around. Because if I'm going to go, I don't want to smear my paint, right? So I'm just going to turn it around to make things easier on myself. I like to constantly be turning my paintings. So that way I'm not stressing out my back. Remember to, to not slouch. Oftentimes we find ourselves where we're focused so much and we just don't think about it. But this painting is going to take a little bit of time to paint and you don't want to be like your back's hurting while you're painting because then if you're in, you're annoyed and you're in pain, it's going to show through on your work and you don't want that to happen. Uh, unless you're trying to paint a piece that is very dramatic, then possibly you could. You know, you have a slight little headache or whatever. It probably can help, maybe. I don't know. If I guess I'm a method actor. But, you know, it could be a method painter. Now, I'm kind of just really just rubbing the paint on there. I'm just slapping it all in there, and it's fine. It's going to make little lines, and I'm totally cool with that. I want it to make little cool lines and everything. Remember to make sharp edges. Now, if I'm going way too fast, you can totally pause this video. You know, you don't have to, don't feel like you have to paint this whole entire thing in one day. If you need paint cup a little bit, then come back later. You know, go for it. Feel free to do that. If you do that, though, I recommend saving the video onto your phone or your um, laptop. So that way it'll be easier to find it later. Because you don't want to be like, ah, oh, geez, where were we? And then it's like you're spending like an hour trying to find me and trying to find this video on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Just so that way in the future, it's way easier to find these videos. Um, I am painting one painting a day. So that means I'm uploading one video every day. And they're all genres. I do all kinds of everything. It's really in the moment. Like earlier today, we were paint I was painting some beaches. Um... Beat <laughs> that sounded funny. And uh, I do I do flowers, a lot of flowers. People like like flowers. Um 
Also, if you have ideas for paintings, uh, write down in the comments. Give me some ideas because, you know, I am kind of running out of a few ideas. So I'm going to, I have actually already some yellow here. I'm going to lay out the idea of where my pencil is going to be. And it is going to be Meow. Meow is my pencil. I'll come back and touch that up and make it a little bit longer. I'm also going to add an eraser. And I realize that I don't have any paint with me. I have to go get my brown paint. So I'm going to use brown. I'm going to use a dark brown and a light brown to paint uh, the brush. And then, oh, I also am going to need some black. So go ahead and get your black out. Now, I recommend only pouring this paint out onto your canvas as you need it. The reason why is because acrylic paint dries super fast and I kind of want to be able to have longevity when doing this. So because of that I'm gonna just a little bit at a time and it'll keep my paint moist and wet and also always remember to close your paint. Like don't just let it sitting there on the table with the lid open because then it's gonna allow air to enter in and dry your paint and nobody wants to spend money they don't have to right don't make your paintings more expensive than they have to be okay so now we're gonna v this this little guy is gonna be meow now because i'm doing these lines i can still adjust as needed so these are just basic ideas of where this stuff goes now, since I have this, I'm going to take an opportunity and I'm also going to do the paint palette. This is such a cute painting. I really like it. And he's going to be meow. And meow. And I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on placement. It's just going to be there. We're going to figure this out together. So we're going to do teamwork. And don't stress out about it. If your lines that you made weren't cool, it's okay. We can adjust them. They were just basic ideas of where we need our things to be. Go ahead and fill it in a little bit. Notice how I am actually going around the circle a little bit. I'm doing that because the thickness of my paint, because I'm just globbing it on there, um, it's going to create some lines in the paint will create lines for itself, which will then make the painting really cool. So if you notice, I'm not re-going over this and I'm allowing the paint to be globby and I'm going in a circular way. So it's like the wood. I'm trying to... Impressionism is all about painting the feeling of what the object feels like. And uh, I'm painting this feeling that this is like kind of a rough canvas, sort of. smooth. It's smooth. But it's still, you know, it's wood. I'm also going to paint over this canvas too. This is just, these little lines are just for the places in which there's going to be no color that you can still see. This is such a cute painting. I think I'm going to hang this one in my art studio. I don't sell all my paintings. If I have a painting that I really like that I come across, yeah, I let it be. I have, I have different walls in my house that it's like for different reasons. Like some of the, the really cool stuff I want to show off is in the living room. The not so cool stuff is on the, in the, uh, in the, the hallway and in the, where the stairs are, stairwell. Okay, so I'm gonna, there we go, there we go. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna go back and touch up this brush just a little bit. Oh, that's beautiful. Make sure that the end of the brush is kind of rounded. I'm going to go ahead and turn my painting to make it easier for my hand to be able to paint a straight line. Um, if you have a hard time using tiny little brushes, I recommend using your brush and going and painting on a piece of paper and just doing lines. Like literally vertical lines, horizontal lines. Then when you got that good and those lines come out pretty, try to do a circle. 
Just like when we were learning how to do the alphabet, do the same exact thing, but instead of holding a pencil, you're holding a, uh, a paintbrush. Um, I really feel that it, it will help you a lot. Okay, so I do want my pencil to be in front of my brush, so that's why I didn't continue that line all the way. I am going to go ahead and allow this to sit, and I'm going to dry it for a second, so that way I can add on some more layers. Remember to keep letting your paint dry between layers, so that way you don't have a whoopsie accident like I had. I was looking at my painting and I found some boo-boos that I didn't fix. So I want to go fix them now while I'm thinking about it. I didn't add a little, little bit here. Okay, so now I'm going to make this really straight, very square. I'm going to go ahead and give this another layer. Also, I'm going to make the little guy a little bit fatter. Now with acrylic painting, it's really good to allow the layers to build. You just got to build, like you build a little bit at a time, you build them up. And let them be what they are. Okay, that was great. Okay, so I also noticed that when I did my palette, I kind of messed up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it. 
I want to make sure that all my base stuff is good before I start adding on layers. works it's happy I mean don't fuss with it too much just let it be what it is but still kind of work at it okay so now let's get into painting the brush and the pencil while everything else is drying I'm gonna add a little bit of black I don't need a lot just a little it's too much too much and let's see, I have yellow, I'm going to need some pink, I'm going to need silver, which I can make. Let's, let's take this opportunity to make silver and black. Yeah, we'll do the pink last, which really we should do the pink first. Okay, so let's build up our brush just a little bit. I cleaned off my brush really well. I'm going to go back in here. Thicken up the brush just a little bit, give it some personality. I want it to definitely appear like it's coming, the brush is in front of the, of the paintbrush. Or that the, the pencil is in front of the paintbrush. Make sure that the lines are straight. Ooh, I don't know if you could pick that up on the radio, but it was a train. I live on the top of a hill and a lot of the sounds from the city below kind of get carried up. Okay, so we did that. We need it to dry a little bit. So while that's drying, let's work on, we're gonna put, we're gonna work on the brush. Okay, so I kind of want their points to be at the same time, the same little places. So, I'm gonna make this thing, this brush a little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter. My great thing about painting is if you mess up, you could always paint over it and fix it. I made the brush part too big. It's okay. We'll paint over it. Alrighty then. Okay. So now we're going to come down here, we'll paint a black strip, okay. So the, the, my, it's not really all the way dry on the brush, it kind of is, but it's kind of not. I'm going to go ahead and oops, make my little lines, a little Charlie Brown wiggle. I'm going to go ahead and make the point. For making the point, I'm going to turn my canvas so I can get a nice, pretty, angle, good angle to make my point. I'm making a little triangle. It's okay to turn the canvas if you need to. Okay, so from here, I actually I have some black. I'm cleaning out my brush so I can make my point with my rag a little bit pretty again. One of the best things to do is to always make sure that your brush is super pretty before you apply the paint so it's cleaned and it's at a nice little point and then you add the paint to it and that'll give you a lot of success when you're painting. So I'm going to go here and paint the hole for the thumb. 
Now, have you noticed what I'm doing by bouncing around to different areas? I'm allowing some places to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to line the bottom of this just to give it a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna take the black and I'm gonna add a shadow and at the same time, I'm gonna straighten the line. Just kind of let that one go away on its own. So I'm only adding it on the bottom here, so that way it gives more of a 3D look. I'm going to go ahead on my E, and I'm going to add some little lines to just give this E some personality. Now you don't have to add the lines exactly where I'm adding them, but this is where I suggest and where I think that the lines would be come in handy. See how I, they're not all the way super perfect, thick connecting lines. They're just kind of happening. That's what I think makes this, this painting a little bit cooler is just by allowing the paint to do its thing and to be natural. Um, I am trying to put effort into making those lines straight, but their thicknesses are kind of varying. Also, when you do this, I recommend that you do it when the, the paint underneath is fully all the way completely dry. You'll get a better result. So don't press too hard with your with your brush really light the lightest you could possibly hold the brush like right there it was wet so now my brush has white on it I'm gonna clean the clean that so otherwise I'm gonna start getting gray and I don't want gray um, on this I just want white and black so it stands out really well um, so I washed my brush I wiped it off on my paper towel and now I have a nice pretty edge and then I dip it into the black. I don't fill up the whole thing completely. My bristles don't want to be full all the way. Just a little bit. Just a little bit on the tips. And then tiny little lines. Don't overwork your lines. Let them be what they are. Yep. Just let it be. That's good. I like it. It works. Okay, so now let's do the same thing to the L. Pretty much I'm going to go all the way around the L. I am going to turn this because all this is wet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my canvas. I suggest that you do the same. Okay. So now for the L. Little tiny lines. Little tiny lines. Little tiny lines. Don't overwork your lines. Hmm, I feel like with that eye, I probably should go up a little higher. Nah, because then if I go up higher, it won't really match the E. It's just that this went out really far. Hmm. No, nah, it's okay. I'll let it be. It is what it is. Don't overthink your art. Just let things happen. Let things be natural. Now I'm going to give this one a little thicker line on the bottom and this thicker line is going to act as though a sh as though there's a shadow under it and that this L is kind of standing out and it's a big thick thing. Nope, oh, the paint's wet. Got to wipe off all that uh, white. I'm going to go, even though the paint is wet, I'm going to go and be really brave and very careful. And make sure that my black line doesn't go outside because all it outside of the edge because all it is is a shadow. Okay, this is coming along. Now, if you notice, there's some parts of the painting that are shiny, and that's okay. 
the shiny parts are they're still wet. Um, as it dries, the shininess is going to go away. Now, if you want the shininess to stay, you could always top coat this painting when it's completely dry and cure, and cured, and then it'll always be shiny with the top gloss. I would recommend using an uh, aerosol can to apply that. You'll get, I, I feel that you'll get the best result. Okay, so let's do a line. Vary the thickness of the lines. Some parts want to be thick, other parts don't want to be. Very loose, very extremely loose. Don't overthink this. Let it be what it is. See what I did? These, This one and this one are kind of farther out on the lines and then this one is more in the middle to try to vary it. Yep. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna turn my painting back around. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and on our palette, we're gonna say that the person painting had some area of black paint on their palette. There was just a little blotch of black paint. I'm gonna wash the brush completely, and then I'm gonna go back into the white and take a, oh, not too much. Take some white, and be like, oh, then they had some white on their canvas. And they just globbed up the white. Big glob of white paint. Gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go on the bottom here and I'm gonna add some red. And I'm gonna say that down here they had a big glob of red paint. This is where they kept their pretty red. Okay, I might need another coat when that dries. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so now the next one we're going to go to is they needed some yellow. This canvas, they were ready to paint some yellow. Okay. So I have yellow, the yellow goes on here and I glob it, I had some yellow. Okay, so now that we have our yellow, we're gonna we're gonna want to add blue, purple, and green. So let's go ahead first and start blue because blue's in the middle. It'll help us measure out everything. So we're gonna do blue, and we'll just add some blue mia. And this is where they kept their blue. Kind of globbed it up a little bit. It is a primary color. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay. So now let's add some green. Do you remember what makes green? Blue and purple. 
but we want kind of a bright green. So because of that, we're gonna take a tiny, only a little bit of blue, and we're gonna take a lot of yellow and mix them together. And they're gonna slowly turn into green. Do you see the magic? I like that color. That's a good green. Stands out from this other green. So yeah. And we'll just glob it on. Look, they had some green. And I'm not going to make these into perfect little beautiful areas because we are painting, right? Like, look at my canvas right now. It's not perfect and beautiful, is it? No, it's not. So that's why these aren't going to be perfect little, little circles. Oh, I should have put purple there. Ah, oh, I made a mistake. Ah! Oh, well, we'll put purple here. Ah, oh, I was trying to go with the darker color because if you add the blue with the black, it gets darker. So I was trying to stay in the idea of the hues for the color wheel, but oh well. Oh well, it'll be our little mistake. Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> so purple. What's going to make purple? Blue and red make purple. So I'm going to take some blue, just a little bit, not a lot, and add it to my red. And voila. Make sure when you're mixing colors that you mix it a whole bunch. So that way you really get a good coating. And it really mixes well on your brush. You don't have blue and white and red lines going through it. And then we're going to add it here. And we're just going to say that this person needed a lot of purple. Yep, they needed purple. They liked the purple. They needed the purple. Yep. Okay. I need, I'm going to add my yellow and make my yellow a little bit bigger. Um, I have a tiny bit here, but there's some green. I want to make sure I don't get the green. I'm just going to add... You know what? I think I should not be cheap about it and just put a little bit more yellow onto my canvas. Oh, there we go. Glob it in there. They needed a lot of that. The only thing we're not really representing on this canvas is an orange. Yeah, I think we, we didn't add orange. We need to add some orange. So that's, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. We'll revisit it in a minute. Okay, so let's work this. Our, um, the pencil's starting to do really well. So let's mix a light brown color. I am going to add, you know what, we'll do it here. I have my really dark color of brown. I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit, add it into my white, and I'm really going to mix, mix it really, really well. And that's kind of cool, but not really brushy, right? So I'm going to take some yellow a little bit. I'm going to add it in there. Just a little bit of yellow. And add that in. Hmm, that's cool. Maybe a little bit more brown. Now, when you add brown colors, they go, when you add darker tones to lighter tones of darker tones, they a little goes a long way with the darker tones. So, when you're mixing color and you're adding them, just add a little bit at a time. Don't add too much. Um, it's always easy to add and it's hard to take away. So I'm gonna go in here, try to make my little pencil. I'm gonna go over my thing just a little bit, it's okay, just a little. I can come back and fix that and touch it up. So I like that. It's working. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and make a, a pink eraser. Um, I don't think I'm really going to need this tone anymore. I mean, I do have it, but I don't really think I'm going to use it again. I'll wash my brush off. I don't have any red on my palette right now, so I'm going to go ahead and add a... Oh, whoops. I just needed a tiny, tiny bit. So then we have, I still have some white. I'm going to brush my, br uh, wipe my brush really good, get all the other color off of it. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of red, just a little bit, and I'm going to put it in here with my white and mix it. The more red you add to the white, the darker the pink, the lighter the red you add, the lighter, the, the less red you add, the lighter the pink will be, the more pastelish. The more red you add, the darker tone that the pink will be. That's kind of cute, but it, I don't know, it blends in too much. I'm starting to think maybe I need a little bit more red on that to be an eraser. So I'm just going to go with a tiny bit more red and add it. Remember what I said? It's always easy to add and it's hard to take away because those darker colors, see how it's getting darker? Those darker colors really change pigment a lot. They change the white a lot and the lighter colors. Okay, so now we're gonna make this a rounded square. So we're gonna try to make a little square. That looks good, I like that, that works. I'm gonna probably glob it up just a little bit. That's good, I like it. Now I could take some of this pink and add it to my palette, um, but I don't really have pink on here. I really need orange. So how are we gonna get orange? Does anybody remember? So we have the yellow and we have the red. So we have yellow here. Let's take some red and let's mix it in the orange, to the yellow and see if we can get some orange. is coming. Now I always like to test out my colors a little bit. Don't just be mixing and then add. Like take a moment, think about it. Is that orange? What could I do to orangey this a little bit more? Yeah, that's pretty orange. Should I make it darker? I think I should make it a tiny bit darker. So by making it darker, I added the red. If I wanted it to be a lighter orange, then I would have added more yellow. Make sure you mix really well. Is that? Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna glob it on there. Okay, well, I'm liking it. I'm loving it. It's pretty cool. The purple is really dark. It's very hard to see it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead, and we made this purple. I'm going to add some little white to it. Take a little bit of white, and I'm going to add it here with my purple and try to see if I can lighten up the purple. Mm, that's a beautiful purple. Yep, I think it'll stand out nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on in there. There. Now we can see it better. Yeah. Much better. Now you notice I'm not making these perfect little circles. I'm making them like blobs. I'm going to go ahead, and since my purple's kind of a lot in there, I'm going to add some more blue just to bring it down a little bit. Um, but I want each of these globs to have kind of their own personality. So this guy's going to go out just a little bit. He's globbing. Make sure they're not perfect little circles. Yeah, that works. I like that. It's coming. Yeah. Yep. I'm loving it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make some gray. I 
I do think that we need to dry this a little bit because I can see, I, it's not showing up too well on the camera, but I can see that this is still very wet. So go ahead and dry your painting all the way. drawing my painting I was staring at it and I saw some little things that I didn't like about it and I want to change so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of blue to try to see if I can cover up and blend in this little square Remember when I had my boo-boo earlier? I'm gonna go ahead and fix that a little bit. But I'm gonna really work on it and blend it. Blend it a lot. So that way you don't see more of it. Yeah, that works, that's good, it hides it. Hides my little boo-boo. Okay. So now let's do this, the um, silver. Silver is super easy to make. All it is, is white and black in varying degrees. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna go into the mix. The more black you add, the darker your silver is gonna be. The more white you add, the lighter the silver. So like this silver is pretty light. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more black just to darken it up a little because I don't want an off-white. I want a, I want a silver. I want it to just silver. I think this is good. This works. This is a good silver. I've got plenty of it. Okay, so I'm gonna make my brush pretty with the paint. I don't want a big huge glob of paint on there. Just a little bit. So I can still have a pretty point on my brush. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna add a little swoosh. Whoosh! Little highlight. And then I'm going to add some swooshes here. See, only four. I added four. There's no exact number, just whatever you think. I'm going to add some silver here. I'm going to add a hmm, little, you know what, let's go ahead with the silver that we have left and we're going to put some, we can do it here, we can do it there, starting to think we should do it here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back and touch up my little 
circle of black. I think I'm going to need, you know what, more of my gray to be in there because I can still see uh, some of the brown and the black underneath and I don't want to do, I don't want to see that. I want to see silver. Okay, so then I'm going to go back in with my black. And while I, I just brushed my thing and I need a really nice pretty point, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this down here because I still have a pretty point. Make my little triangle again. Let's see. It um, be cool to add a line. Where else could I add? Oh, I could add a shadow on, just like I added shadows. Oh, I forgot to add a shadow there too. Okay, before I do that, let's go ahead and do this. Work out this black guy over here a little bit. I just had a boo-boo. While I was painting, my phone died, and I'm recording this video on my phone. So I took the moment to go ahead and dry my painting fully. I didn't do anything. You didn't miss anything. As soon as it beeped, it turned off. So we're still in the same place. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much done for the most part. I'm just going to add a few little highlights. It's really going to make it pop. I clean my brush, have a little white on there. I'm going to add a little tiny highlight. See? Just a little one. I'm going to wipe off the paint with this brush. Clean it, wash it good, get some little white, or a little black, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a, a shadow, just like how I did on the L. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little shadow to this E, make it feel like it's kind of standing out a little bit. There we go, a little bit. And I'm also going to do one right here with the pencil. Now you don't have to add this shadow, I just feel that if you do add the shadow it gives it a little bit of a pop and it kind of stands out a little bit. Just a little pop. I'm kind of not liking what happened there. I can go back and fix it. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. I'm also going to do a little little shadow down here. There we go. Just a little guy. Not much. Just a little to be like, I'm here. Uh, make that a little bit more bumpy. Okay, so I'm going to try to fix this little area, which I don't think I really can do a whole lot to. I wish I didn't Mm, too much. Too much. Um, I don't need a whole lot of yellow, so I'm going to try to salvage this yellow right here. And I think I'm just going to have to kind of blop it on a little. Yeah, I'm gonna let that be what it is. Sometimes you're gonna you don't want to overwork what you've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the black line. Just a little tiny one. Yep. I'm 
liking it. I love this painting. I think I'm going to call it quits. I really like this. It's fun. I hope yours is awesome. Just as, like mine is super awesome. Uh, could you please post a video like or a video? Uh, could you please take a picture of your painting so that way I can see it? Because I want to see how awesome and cool it turned out because I know it did. Um, if it didn't, one thing that I can uh, tell you is that if you want to use for these letters right here, if you would like to use a stencil and draw it out with a pencil first and then paint it, it might help. But sometimes it's good to just push ourselves, you know. I'm sure in a year from now, if you come back to this painting and you paint it again, you'll probably paint it better the second time. It's a live and a learn. Um, and as always, remember to take a moment and love your family and friends. Let them know that you love them. Give them a hug. Do something nice every day. And on the next time, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.